The content ecosystem incentivizes engagement, which is maximized when you are not thinking critically, but when you are feeling strong feelings. If you don't live under a rock, you've probably heard people discuss social media algorithms manipulating us and pushing conspiratorial thinking on everybody with the result that some people are radicalized. And often the way it's discussed is with conspiratorial thinking. They claim that YouTube or Meta or TikTok or even that specific people like Zuckerberg or Luthor are manipulating the youth. Now, I'm very wary of conspiracy theories because I know where they all end up, but I'm also wary of them on more principled grounds. I do science and conspiratorial thinking is an extreme form of the opposite. But what I want to talk about today is a way that the radicalization pipeline is real and how we are potentially being manipulated, but there's also kind of no manipulators. Maybe the real manipulators were the friends we made along the way. We're self-radicalizing with increasingly extreme language and glorified magic eight balls. And I'm going to pull back the curtain and show you how I, your trusted science edutainment parasocial zaddy, have been incentivized to radicalize you. Not for any specific cause either, just whatever flavor of extreme you're most into. No jokes in the comments about how language zaddy wants to know what you're into. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Taylor Jones. I've got a PhD in linguistics from the University of Pennsylvania, and on the channel, I discuss everything related to language, linguistics, language learning, and culture. If you're into those topics, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. This is Language Jones. I'm trying to make an intentional practice out of repeating the foundations of the scientific method on the channel because it's important and it's not taught well and it's basically the antidote to all of this manipulation. Linguists do science, at least most of us. I guess that's an empirical question. But at its heart, the scientific method requires two very simple things. You have to formulate your ideas in a way that can actually be tested somehow. And this is the hard part. You have to try to disprove yourself. I pissed off a lot of lawyers last time. They left me comments and some emailed me when I said that lawyers try to prove a position using whatever best supports their argument and ignore the rest. But good scientists are constantly trying to find more and more inventive ways to testably disprove themselves. What this means is that the truly great scientist is no fun at parties. The reason I bring this up is that there's a lot of scientific evidence that this is not a normal way of thinking. No shit. But this is important. We naturally fall into ways of thinking where we look for connections and we look for meaning and we're not too picky about actually thinking it through logically or trying to disprove it. And we love stories. We love things that make us feel strong emotions, especially if there's a hint of danger. All of this plays into social media algorithms. A while back, I was selected for an EduTuber Accelerator. It's a program to teach educators how to more effectively compete in the algorithmic marketplace so that we can actually educate a larger audience. And no, they did not find it funny when I pointed out that EduTuber Accelerator sounds evocative of a potato cannon. And one big thing I learned, and this was borne out in the data after implementing it, is that my videos do better when I subtly manipulate your psychology. If I have high valence emotional words like, say, revealing or strange, my videos do better than if I just make a title that's what I'm going to talk about. If I have a nice haircut and a trimmed beard, which I'm realizing I didn't do this time, my videos do better. Of course, if there's a woman in the thumbnail, the videos do even better, especially if I go with a word that has a dual valence like revealing. What this means is that due to the attention economy, we are all incentivized to, at a minimum, use more colorful, some would say more extreme, language. I'm doing it here on purpose. Now, here's where a secret part of the algorithm hidden from your perception could manipulate you. By the way, did you catch the last sentence? Anyway, YouTube offers suggestions for content ideation based on what people are engaging with. Maybe you can already see the problem, but let's take a real example. This video was inspired in part because YouTube provided me with an entire video outline in classic elementary school five paragraph essay style about uncovering the linguistic conspiracy of the word normal. Now, there is no conspiracy. And the recommended content, such as it was, was basically saying that normal is a mathematical concept and not a social ideal. But let's look at this outline it provided me and think critically about it. I want you to pay particular attention to a few kinds of manipulation at play here. But before we get to that, who wrote this outline? That's right, it's a large language model or LLM, conventionally called AI now. Is this an intelligent agent thinking about what it says to me or you? No, it's fucking insane. It's a text predictor. It is a glorified autocomplete. 
and it's trained on, well, YouTube and YouTube searches, what you all are looking for and what is doing well. And we have all that psychological bias for high emotional valence and for narrative. This one was particularly striking to me, however, because of the hallmarks of conspiratorial thinking it had built in consistently throughout. So I want you to pay attention to a few things. First, emotionally charged words that create an explosive reaction, something that triggers immediate mental anguish or rage or, less commonly, excitement and joy. Second, let's think about presuppositions and entailments. Those are fancy linguistic terms for basically thinking about what has to be true for a word to be used, or what the speaker has to assume is true and the speaker invites the hearer to implicitly agree with, and what falls out from the word that is used. And lastly, I want you to think about who the actual agents are. Who's doing what? The doing is very often stated, but the doers are shrouded in mystery and danger, almost like you could project the responsibility onto anybody, perhaps a very small minority group you don't interact with much. YouTube starts by helpfully providing the hook that they call intriguing revelation. Already we have emotionally charged language, and that part was just for me. The revelation is, quote, Forget everything you thought you knew about normal. This isn't just a word, it's a powerful tool being used to control narratives and enforce hidden agendas. We're about to expose the deep-seated implications of this single word and how it's subtly manipulating your world. Let's think about this. Forget everything you thought you knew is a very strong opening. I like it. There's an implication in saying it's not just a word. You may have thought it was a mere word, but it's not limited to that harmless domain. And when we get right into powerful tool and control and enforce hidden agendas, these are words designed to make you feel. But notice also the passive voice, a powerful tool being used to control narratives. By whom? The thing is, the LLM doesn't think it's the Freemasons or Mossad or Republicans or Emmanuel Macron or whoever. It doesn't think anything. It's just stringing together words based on optimizing some parameter. In this case, observed metrics of engagement. But if you already have an idea of who might do something nefarious and untoward, Justin Trudeau, those are already triggered by this language use, whether consciously or not. The first real content paragraph continues, quote, the Trojan horse of normal, opening with a relatable scenario. Feeling abnormal or not normal in everyday situations, hook, immediately introduce the idea that normal isn't a natural state, but a manufactured concept tease the deeper implications, how this seemingly innocuous word quietly shapes our reality. Again, the implication of seemingly innocuous. The historical architecture of normal. Brief historical journey, how normal evolved from a mathematical term to a social construct. Highlight key periods or movements that weaponized the word, e.g. eugenics and consumerism. Show examples of how normal was used to marginalize or exclude specific groups historically. I just want to draw the claim that it's, quote, a manufactured concept. Notice, again, a form of the passive here. Who manufactured it? Big statistics? And of course, we have Trojan horse, weaponization, eugenics, all sorts of inflammatory language. Case studies in normal enforcement. Modern examples of normal being weaponized. Body image standards, career paths, even political discourse. Analyze recent social media trends or news headlines where normal is explicitly or implicitly used to shame or pressure. Expose how corporations and political entities subtly leverage the desire for normalcy. This is where we get into some really interesting territory since you have all of that inflammatory language, but also a new linguistic priming. And keep in mind, this is generated for content creators to fill in the actual content. But if I see enforcement and weaponize, and then I'm told to link it to political entities, I don't know about you guys, but I only really see one thing referred to in online discourse lately as an entity. That might be all that's necessary for another creator to repeat stock talking points created by the KGB in the 1960s to discredit the entity they were afraid was aligning with the US. And here's a good place to say that, yes, there are sometimes actual conspiracies and political manipulation, so it's all the more important to think critically about the information that we consume. In the last two parts of the proposed structure, we get into some really interesting territory because the tone shifts to a sort of liberatory politics of freedom and emancipation. It goes on, breaking the chains of normal, strategies for identifying when normal is being used manipulatively, empower viewers with actionable steps to challenge and redefine their own normal, introduce concepts like neurodiversity, body positivity, and alternative lifestyles as direct counter narratives. This is where you get high emotional valence still, but about breaking chains, redefining, emancipating, and empowering. 
And the last is, in my opinion, the most dangerous. It goes, reclaiming your reality. Emphasize the freedom and power in embracing individuality beyond imposed normalcy. Imposed by whom? Call to action. Encourage viewers to share their own experiences with normal in the comments. Final thought. See how I'm manipulating you? I'm asking you to leave a comment. Final thought. A powerful statement on the importance of linguistic awareness and critical thinking for personal liberation. So reclaiming is a very interesting word, and it has the presupposition that your reality has been taken. It's also got a structural presupposition that one can have one's own reality with the entailment that there may be multiple equally valid realities. Now, a couple of things are really important to think about here. First of all, this is inflammatory language, but no actual content. It's up to the content creator to fill it in, and different people will do so differently. I've done so in a weird meta way. I would not be surprised in the slightest if this video does better because the algorithm shows it to more people, not because of a conspiracy to radicalize, but because it uses all of the keywords that YouTube literally suggested to me, including manipulate a bunch of times, based on what's doing well in other videos. So if I'm a careful, scientifically minded creator, I might ignore this altogether. But if I'm just trying to stay ahead of a production schedule and I'm more of a just say shit creator, then you're going to get my biases, unresearched and not critically evaluated thoughts, just punched up in a more amygdala tickling package. And yeah, have I primed violence with punched up and sex with tickled package? Totally. But I'm at least sometimes aware of it and willing to point out the irony and humor of it. The other part that I think is fascinating is that this is not right-wing algorithmic radicalization, and there's a huge blind spot for the academic research there. This, because for some reason all the research presupposes radicalization is a right-wing thing, despite it very obviously being a problem of polarization that affects both poles. I guess the takeaway here is that you should arm yourself with skills against manipulation. Is every colorful use of language manipulative? No, of course not. But it's really helpful to recognize that the content ecosystem incentivizes engagement, which is maximized when you are not thinking critically, but when you are feeling strong feelings. So it's important to ask yourself, is this inflammatory? Why are they trying to make me feel whatever they're trying to make me feel? Where are they using weasel words and avoiding actually saying anything outright? In my case, it's hard for me to talk about who is manipulating us because it's kind of an emergent property of a system that monetizes attention and incentivizes hacking our amygdala. So I really don't think there's a nefarious cabal. It's more like the whole Michael Crichton view of scientific advances. There's unanticipated negative outcomes from emergent properties of systems we implement without fully understanding. It's time to go back and read Crichton. Or, like I said in the beginning, maybe the real manipulators were the friends we made along the way. If you like what I'm doing with the channel, you can always support it on YouTube with super thanks, or over on Patreon at patreon.com slash language jones. Please actually do leave me a comment. They are great for the algorithm. What can I say? And subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, happy learning.